Would you um encourage more women to getting into uh, being an attorney or in the, the the law industry? I guess. So what I would say is, if this is where your heart is, absolutely, because it's not cheap. That schooling is not cheap. The the it's not easy. Um, being out here on the other side, outside of school, is not easy, especially if you're going to hang up your own shingle. That's what we call it when you start your own biz, your own law firm. It's called mm-hmm. hanging up your own shingle. So if you're going to do that um, and you that's what you want, um, even if you don't want to start your own firm but you want to just be an attorney in corporate America, whatever the case may be, um, just make sure that this is where your heart is at because – this ain't a cakewalk it's at real all. On that yeah, side. it's real on this side. Schooling was hard, um, and then you know all those loans that I had to get to go to law school was was real. Mm, so okay, you know, just make sure. Have you ever you worked do. for a firm or no? You, really? Mm-mm. I just can't. Well, just <laughs> jumped out there. I mean, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I know it's crazy. Like looking back, I'm like, Ooh, like that's a little cringy, you know. Yeah. But no, I just. Yeah, I was work so I was working in corporate America, right? Mm-hmm. I was working for a Fortune 500 company in their contract department. I got licensed as an attorney mm-hmm. while I was working there, and I thought and they had an opening position for the attorney that looked over my department, right? So mm-hmm. to me, that's a no-brainer. I've been here for 3 years. I'm pretty much almost uh in my eyes running the the department for Texas. So it may I mean Right? No brainer. I'm going to now be the attorney. Like, duh. They said no. I said, oh. <laughs> so what? I bounced. I was like, yeah, no. Nah, y'all ain't finna do me like that. I want to be an attorney. I'm not going to keep doing this. You know what I'm saying? So um, so I just started my own firm because they refused. And, and yeah. Oh, wow. I decided that I wasn't going to allow anybody else to dictate my future. You know what I'm saying? So I just went ahead and. But mind you, I had a one and a half year old. She was one and a half at the time, mm. you know, and I was by myself. I had just bought a house. So it was real out here in these streets, yeah. but I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't mm. because I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I if I slow rolled myself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I jumped out there. Mm, and just did dope. it. That's Dang. super dope. It's scary. It's scary though. Scary it's though scary. But <laughs> On the other side of it is is yeah. it yeah. paid off? Yeah, 100%. it paid off a hundred percent, absolutely. And I would do it again. Really, I would absolutely. There's nothing I would change because it's when your back is against the wall, right? Like that's when you realize what you're made of. Mm. Like that's when it ain't no ain't no plan B. I didn't have a plan B. It was plan A all day, and I had to make plan A work by hook or by crook. It was gonna happen, right? Mm-hmm. And I have a baby to feed, so. Hey, like, but I didn't know anybody else that did it, so it was one of those that I was just like, eh, can't, "Well, yeah. let me pray about it and go," you know. But I know my family members are like, "What? Is, <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> yeah. What? What is you doing?" And I was like, "I don't know," you know. <laughs> but but it worked. How did you gain those clients like like that first year? That's what. Remember when I told you I was doing criminal and doing all that? I was on those wheels, those court appointment attorneys. Mm. That was your girl. Mm. I was doing court appointment for criminal and court appointment for CPS. And so, um, yeah, I made good money though. It was a lot of it was a lot of cases, and a lot I was running from the time I dropped off to daycare in the morning to the time I picked her up. I was in different counties doing hustling and really? being attorneys, you know, being a uh, court appointed attorney in different counties. So I would go to court here in the morning, then I got court here, and it, duh, duh, duh. so all day I was in court, um, picking up, you know, McDonald's on the way in between driving mm-hmm. to the next hearing. Um, so when I was bumping my trap that's when that's what it was you know what i'm saying that's what i was doing but um i mean i had to do what i had to do people talk bad about court appointed attorneys they do you've heard them i have they talk bad about court a lot of those court appointed attorneys were amazing also had their own firms and had private attorneys but was doing court appointment for whatever reason right um they were dope a lot of those attorneys you couldn't afford on your own you couldn't afford on your own, but then they would do the court appointment, and you would still get that same type of service. They would mentor me. They were they were awesome attorneys, man. Really? And people always like, oh, they think like it's the bottom of the barrel. No, some of these dope attorneys that if you had the money, you would Google and look up and pay private money to mm-hmm. were also doing court appointments. Yeah. The reason why I think people say that is because, like you said, they got a caseload is, is big, yeah. So they don't have enough time to really sit down and give you that attention mm-hmm. that you would want from attorney that you're paying. You know what I mean? Right. But but at the same time, a lot of the attorneys, the ones that I'm talking about, the ones okay. that I ran a- across, 
gave you that top notch service, what you was pe- paying privately or or you was court appointed. Mm. They gave you that top notch service regardless, right? And they put their their they put their all now. Of course, there's a caseload, right? Mm. Um, but I mean, we deal with caseloads now anyway, privately, right? Yeah. So, um, fortunately, the county I was in, it wasn't from my experience, it wasn't that bad, you know, where they were just overloading us with cases. We had enough attorneys on the wheel. But, I mean, I would be like, yo, like, she's dope. Like, that's your attorney? She's dope. Like, she knows the game, and you couldn't afford to know. You, better, you know, like, <laughs> count your blessings on that, you know? How do, how does the general public find out if the attorney is good or not? How do you know? I guess it's just, I mean, you don't. It's just a, we know because I know how they work, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But the general public – they don't and because they've heard all these things about court appointed attorneys and they kind of you know they kind of like give them shade and stuff you know um but i I say if the attorneys answering your phone calls answering your questions if they're if they're showing that they care if they show up to court if they just show up to court at the time that you're supposed to be there and you see them in front of that judge and they y'all discussed the the strategy and they 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 hitting it, whether they win or lose, but they hitting it, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's that's the makers of a good attorney. Mm-hmm. It's the ones that ain't answering your phone call. They don't show up to court. Like, it's a court date, and you up there by yourself, and they got to reset it because the attorney didn't show up. That's when you got a clue, like, mm, eh, mm-hmm. maybe this ain't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if they're, like, going hard for you, and they are and they know your case, and, they, and they're sitting there talking to you about negotiation strategies and tactics... I mean that's that's what it is. Mm, okay. Uh, Not for those that have court appointed attorney. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've I've uh I've gotten off those wheels because I I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And criminal criminal law just wasn't it. Yeah. So and family law wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? Because family law is a whole nother. Listen. Listen, I've been through all those courts. <laughs> all of them. Listen, family law is no joke. As like as an attorney on this side, the things that you see and hear, um, is wild yeah it's wild so <laughs> yeah. like that's not my thing either so i wanted to do what i wanted to do so yeah. that's why i got off but man there's still some dope attorneys on that wheel yeah what's your background where, where are you where are you I, I feel like you hear gonna, something i do <laughs> I do. I hear some kind of island something. Oh, okay. See, usually I don't know what people are hearing, so I just throw it all out there. So I was born in New York. Okay. And um, so every now and again, that'll push through. Okay. And then my family is Panamanian. My mom and dad are from Panama. The, really? The country, not Panama City, Florida. I have to make that distinction, right? Because people be like, who Florida? The, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't understand. Who, who be thinks like, Florida? <laughs> Florida? I be like, my people are from Panama. Florida? <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, sir, no, the country, really? no, yeah. I'll be like the Panama Canal, you know, the Panama. So, yeah, that's where my people are from. Mm, Panama. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for tapping in with us. In order to see more clips like this, check out this video here or check out this one here.